entity is about. They don't have to guess anymore. When we talk about an entity, which can be a person, a place, a review, and it's an extensible ontology, so you can add many, many more entity types. It's four basic things. The type, is it a person, is it a place, is it a review? The name, obviously if it's a person, the name is the name. If it's a book, it's a title. An image, so for me, of course, it's a photo of me. And of course, you need a description. So those are the four things you need to describe an entity within Google. Now, we've already been doing a lot of work in web search around rich snippets, and we extend the rich snippets testing tool to also support schema.org. And what this means is you can point a URL in there, and we'll show you not just the rich snippets in there, not just the microformats, but a schema.org markup in there, and show you the entities in that web page. The other thing we got when we spoke to people was they said, it's not enough just to have rich snippets testing. I need help in creating my web page in the beginning. So we built this snippet config tool. As you can see, it has a drop down where you can pick the most common entity types, put in your title or name, the URL, the description, and we'll show you what the markup will look like. For example, on this rather nice little website, you can see this is the web page. Now, as a human, you look at that and you say, this is a page about a person. For a search engine, that's hard. What you want is some way to mark up the HTML. So if you look at the red sections, what I've done is I've basically said that I want to say this whole page, so that from the body element downwards to the closing body element, is about a person. And then I want to say the name of the person. So as you can see, just by adding those red sections, I said this page is about an entity. I said a description of the entity, I've given the image, and now you know what the page is about. So now I have a website. Google and other search engines know what this website is about, and it's rather cool. But how are people going to connect to this? They go to the website and they say, well, nothing's changed. They go back, nothing's changed. What you need is a mechanism where they can choose to follow a Google Plus page, perhaps, and be notified when new things happen. So with Google Plus pages, you can create a connection with the people who visit your website and use that to tell them when interesting things happen. Here's an example of something me and some friends built. It's about developer experience. Who here has heard of developer experience? Excellent. Our marketing campaign is working brilliantly. It's just me and a couple of friends, so we don't exactly have a massive budget. We do have a Google Plus page, however, and on that we post links to the new articles we write, we post links to events we attend. Whenever one of us writes something interesting about developer experience, we put links here. And as you can see, we've got a pretty big following for something done by three people in their spare time. And the beauty of this is that this is something that lets those people know when we do something new and interesting. Now, the thing about Google Plus pages is that for me and my two friends, who you may have heard of, Pamela Fox, Michael Vanoff, we all want to manage the page, but we don't want to share a password. So Google Plus lets multiple people manage one page. At the same time, Google Plus lets one person manage multiple pages. As you can see there, I have one, two, three, four Google Plus pages. Um, the last one is particularly funny. Who here has a Google Plus page? Keep your hands up, okay. Who here has two? Four? Six? Who has five? Go in wins. So the nice thing about Google Plus is you can create many, many pages for interesting things, interesting concepts, brands, books, your blog, whatever. And you can use this to build a community around that idea. So we have a community around developer experience. There's a much smaller community around my book. It's really good. There's an incredibly small community around my blog. And of course, there's my you've never heard of Google Plus page, which is where I make um, mocking comments about my colleagues when they've never heard of Richard Dawkins or Neil Gaiman, and I post a link so they can learn.
Speaking of my colleagues, if you want to learn more about how you connect with the people who visit your page, your website, you realize something pretty important. The best way to connect with people is face-to-face, -face, or as we say, face-to-face-to-face. -to -face -to -face. And if you're interested in that, you should go to Jonathan Berry's talk this afternoon at 1.30, where he'll tell you about Hangouts, Hangout applications, and the power of the Hangout button as a way to connect with people who visit your web page. And of course, and those of you at home will miss this, if you want to know who Jonathan Berry is, he's over there. So you can see his face. At this point, I have a website. People can find it in search. They can choose to stay informed about it by following it on Google Plus. But how do they discover I have a Google Plus page? Well, the way we do that is quite simple. We have something we call the Google Plus badge. And what this does is it gives you a little snippet of code you can put on your website, and people can choose to use that to follow your page. Now, here's where it gets interesting. You spend a lot of time and effort getting these people to come to your site. The last thing you want is a badge that takes them off your site. So what you'll see in our badge is that the user can follow your Google Plus page without leaving your website. This is pretty cool. The general principles behind the badge and the way we want you to use it is the idea that you want to keep the people on your website. You want them to be able to say, this page is cool. You want to be able to surface who thinks your page is cool. So you can put little faces at the bottom of the, the badge. For everything we're doing in Google+, everything Julie's team is building, we've been building these config tools. The idea is that whilst we could give you a long, complicated manual telling you how to write correct code, it would be better to give you a config tool where you pick the options you want, and we say, here's the code. Now cut and paste it into your website. Those of you who've been following along with our adventures in developer experience will know that that's one of our principles. So as you can see here, you can basically say, I want to create a Google Plus badge for developer experience. In a recent change we made last week, one of many changes we make, we change the dropdown so that now when you go there, because we know who you are, we just say, well, here are your pages. It's a small optimization, but it's the kind of thing we've been trying to do, trying to say, what if we made people the heart of this? Well, we wouldn't ask a person, please go off and find the list of your pages and then type the number in here. If we already know this, we can make this experience simpler, easier, better. So you pick your page. We generate the code for you. You'd say, do you want to, how wide do you want it? And for those of you who like the Blues Brothers, we have both kinds of Google Plus badges here. We have badges for people. So that's the badge for Jenny Murphy, one of my colleagues. And we have badges for, in that case, it looks like the Google Plus developers Google Plus page. As you can see, that's got 54,000 plus ones so far. But from that page, you can configure badges for you, badges for your website, and then you can and paste the code. Speaking of the code, we're going to get to that in a moment. But first, you can configure the size. You can choose the faces to turn up. This is what it looks like on my website, where, as you can see, I am plugging my book. Please buy my book. It's available for free. This is what the code looks like. As you can see, there's not a lot of code. What you do is you take this chunk of code, you put it into the, into the head of your document. And for those of you who are good at JavaScript, you'll see that what we're doing is we're in the line in your web page. We are creating a script tag, which is going to be loaded. And then that script, script tag is going to asynchronously walk your DOM and then find find this G plus tag, and then replace it with the badge. So this means you can control where the badge will appear in your website, which means it can fit in with whatever you've already got. You get a choice of width, the theme, we've got a light version, a dark version, and of course, we use a, have a rally called publisher indication, which is how we tell that this website owns this Google Plus page, because there's a bi-directional link between them. So at this point, I have a rather nice website. People can find it. They can click on the badge, follow the Google Plus page for it. 
and they can keep informed about changes. But how do they tell other people that it's cool? How do they tell other people that the articles in it are cool? Well, last March, we put out the plus one button. This came about because we've seen that people trust recommendations from other people. They know whose taste they can trust. They know, for example, that if I recommend a camera to you, it'll almost certainly come from, it'll suddenly be something like this, and it'll be large and heavy and you know, hurt your hands after a while. However, if somebody else recommends a camera to you, it may be smaller, it may be a phone camera, but you know the people and you can act accordingly. When people buy things like cameras or cars, they want recommendations from people they trust. But the time you are buying the device and the time the person is looking for the recommendation are separate. With the plus one button, we bring those two things together so that whilst you're doing your initial research, you plus one of things you think are good, then when other people who know you or who are following your Google Plus are searching for similar things, we'll show you the recommendation, the endorsement you gave to that. You can, of course, always plus one then share if you want to tell people immediately, I found a great camera shop. The plus one button has a config tool, like everything else we're doing. As you can see, you can control the width, you can specify if you want it to load asynchronously or not, you can choose if you want the markup to be HTML5 valid or not. Thanks to Gerwin for spotting that one. This is what it looks like on my website. As you can see, you plus one. The snippet we talked about earlier turns up there. You choose the circles you want to see it. You can have a little section of faces. The code is going to seem very, very familiar. It's the same snippet you've seen before, which is going to be put into your web page. It's going to then synchronously walk the, the code's going to be synchronously loaded. It's going to walk the DOM because it's going to be looking for the SG plus tag. As you can see, you can control the formatting of the plus one button, but that's going to be replaced with the code for the plus one button. So I've got a great site. People are coming to it. They're choosing to follow the page associated with it. So I can tell them about cool new things. They've got a plus one button so they can tell other people this is a great website. Now imagine my website had, I don't know, something controversial, like perhaps an article comparing Nikon versus Canon, or an article saying that maybe you know hats are awesome and you should really be wearing a hat. And you want to tell people about this, but you don't want to plus one this. You don't want people to think that you're you know, pro hats. Or perhaps you've chosen Nikon over Canon. But you want to tell people, look at this guy, he's so wrong. So we need a way to share without endorsing. So we put together the share button. Like everything else we do, it has a config tool. This may sound familiar. You can control a variety of things about the theming, whether it's HTML5 valid or not. It looks very similar to the plus one button. We're building a set of tools that are internally consistent, that reuse aspects of each other, so that if you understand part of the system, you can use that understanding to learn the rest. The code. Tell me if this sounds familiar. There's a bit of JavaScript, which is going to be put into your web page. It's going to get lo loaded. It's going to asynchronously walk the DOM. And then it's going to find a G plus tag and replace it. As you can see, you can always hard code a share button to talk to it about a particular URL. But by default, it will load or point to the current website, the current page. You may remember this gentleman from last year. This is Timothy Jordan. If you want to learn more about how you can do interesting things with the Google Plus button, with other aspects of Google Plus. If you want to learn, for instance, how you can use the JavaScript callback in the plus one button to use with analytics tools or other things, you should attend Timothy's talk tomorrow at 2.45 where he'll go into how you can get more with Google Plus. Now, my website, well, I like to think that my website isn't so much HTML5 as HTML 3.2. It's very simple. I'm a simple person. But imagine a world where I wasn't a simple person, and I had a website, and it was latency sensitive, or it was written in Flash. And I was the kind of person who was good enough for design that I wanted control over every single pixel on my website. 
well, I can't use the existing buttons because I give up control. So what you need is something else. What we built for you is a little thing we call URL share endpoint. Who has used this? OK, so this is cool. Basically, we have that special URL. It takes two parameters, HL for language and a URL parameter. So what this does is you say, give me a share box pointing to that URL. And that's just a link. And you can basically put any image you want in front of that link. And because it's just a link, nothing gets loaded from Google. It loads, well, it's just a link, so it's instant. There's no worries about latency. Because it's just a link, it'll fit into your Flash website with no problems whatsoever. We'll give you an icon if you want to use our icon. You can, of course, use your own. You can choose to serve the icon from us or from your own website if you're particularly sensitive about latency. But what we noticed was that a lot of people, they were just writing this code. They just wanted a button with a graphic served from Google. Might as well save cost. And when you clicked on it, it popped up in a new window, and it had a share box in it. So we said, if everybody is doing the same thing, perhaps we just give them the code. So we did. This is what we call the URL share link. If you're interested in what we've done when you start taking this idea that you can have URLs that perform actions, if you can start thinking about what happens when multiple sites have these kinds of endpoints and you can do server-to-server -server integration, you should go to Paul Killen's talk tomorrow at 11.45 where he'll talk to you about web intents and how things like our URL share link play a part in that. If you're interested in how all of these buttons load so quickly at the scale we are, if you think about it, we have billions of impressions a day. How do we do that? How do we make that fast? You should go and see John and Multi, who are talking at 5.15, and they'll tell you exactly how we do this. Now, I don't want to give you the impression that we only do the web. As you saw in Vic's talk this morning, we've crossed the point where we have more mobile traffic, more mobile usage, than web usage. So if you go to tomorrow's talk at 1.30, Julia and Francis will tell you interesting things about Android and iOS development for Google+. You should really go there. But that's not all. Let's go back to my family for a moment. We've talked about all the things you can do with the Google+, platform. But they're not technical. So most of these details would have gone over their heads. And they would say, hold on, explain this to me in the context of a real-world shop. Pick something you know, real. Don't make something up, not abstract, concrete. And I would say, well, this is Le Monde. They're where I got this hat from. Beautiful shop, run by a little old couple. And as you can see from the review, I love this shop. I go there once a year, and I buy a vintage hat. And I buy a suit. But I only go there once a year. So if anything interesting happens at that shop during that year, I miss it. If they have a sale, I miss it. They're not the kind of people who are going to run a mailing list. They want something simple, easy to understand, easy to use, where Google does the heavy lifting for them. And because they're an old-fashioned kind of shop, I mean, they sell vintage outfits, they want something simple. So they also think of their metrics very differently to developers. They're not thinking in terms of increasing traffic and increasing engagement. They're thinking in terms of how do we get more customers through the door of our shop? How do we get more business so that when the customer comes in, they come back? How do they do that? How do they go to a world where they've got more customers who are happier and thus more business? And how do they go from people are coming to their shop regularly to a community of people? Well, this is why we did Google Plus Local. Because now this is still in a very early form, and we have a small number of trusted testers who've got the fully integrated experience. But what those people get is a Google Plus page for their particular shop, their particular business. And you can follow that page. And you can see who else likes to follow that page. And you can engage in discussions with the page and with the other people. And you can discover that you have things in common. You can connect with those other people, in my case, around my love of hats. Now, I'm going to finish up. And I'm going to finish up with two quotes. One is from Leo Rustin. You probably have never heard of him. Anybody heard of Leo Rustin? OK, anybody heard of Margaret Mead? Hooray. So he's her brother-in-law. He also wrote lots of books, but that's his biggest claim to fame. 
And one of the things he talks about is this idea about why do we share? At Google Plus, we believe it's important to share the right things with the right people. It should be controlled sharing. And that's because you want to be in control of who understands you. You want to choose who you want to have a better understanding of. You want to choose your community. So if you're a Google Plus page, you're building a community, you want to have some control over that. But in the wider context of Google, in the wider context of the world where we're thinking about upgrading the Google experience, I want to finish with this quote from Clay Shirky. And he talked about how important it is to connect with other people, not just with information. So when we talk about Google and our mission to give everybody access to information, we've got to think beyond and above. And we've got to start saying, how do we upgrade Google? How do we upgrade the Google experience so that it's about connecting and sharing with people? And that includes, of course, my family. Thank you very much. So I think we have a few minutes for questions. Does anybody have any questions? If so, please use the microphones there and there. I'll try to repeat them for the people watching the live stream. Oh, and by the way, hello, London. Any questions? Oh, we have one question in the back. Yes, hi. How do you see uh, the development of Google Plus for enterprises? There is a lot of needs. There is a lot of businesses that have gone up into Google Apps, and those businesses are getting bigger and bigger. And, and most of my customers, we, we do implement Google Apps, are asking, you know, we need a sort of Google Plus environment, but for the company. And I mean social, but for the company. So, so the question was, how do we see the development of Google Plus for the enterprise? When we built Google Plus, we started with the enterprise we know best, Google. We have 30,000 employees, maybe more mm -hmm. nowadays. And we have a Google Plus instance we run for ourselves. We put out Google Plus for Enterprise a few months ago, and it's seen incredible uptake as companies have realized that they can actually bring the benefits of Google Plus within their company. They can connect people within the company to each other around things beyond just the department. And all the features we're rolling out here, those are also rolling out for enterprises. And I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised as we keep working and adding new features. I think we're up to about a feature a day now. I think about a feature a day, that's right. And most of those features are rolling out to enterprise as well. Obviously, there are more complications for enterprise. But given that I have 30,000 people who know where I sit, who want these features, I think you will be seeing many more enterprise features rolling out for Google Plus as time goes on. I believe there was a gentleman there with a question. Yeah, I have a curiosity. At the beginning, you showed us how to create the snippets so we can see our picture or something and description and the search results. How long does it take for Google to recognize that my website had, has those snippets? So the question was, how long does it take for Google to recognize that my site has a new snippet? Is it real time, or does it need to wait? I don't know. So the question, so, what we have in Google is we have a crawler, and it crawls your site based on a lot of signals, including things like, do you have a site map? How often does your site change? Things like that. So we can't, it's not guaranteed. There are things you can do within Webmaster Tools that can accelerate the time it'll be crawled, but it's not guaranteed. So you can go and look on the Google, if you look on the Rich Snippet site, there's information about things like Webmaster Tools and sitemaps and how you can use those to accelerate your recrawl rate. But that's all we can really tell you. OK, thanks. Thank you. I will say that if you, if you do use Rich Snippets, then as soon as people start sharing or plus wanting from your site, then that will immediately work with Google Plus. So that, that is real time, uh, guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, we uh, created a Google Plus, well, Google Plus uh, local page. I guess Thank it got, you. Got migrated over for us. And the ability to maintain hours there is helpful. Um, one of the things I was wondering is, is there an ability to automatically push and update the hours for that page from somewhere? Is there an, a writable API for that purpose? Because we don't want to have to maintain the hours in five different web pages and a couple of different applications. We'd like to be able to push it one spot and then get it pulled. Uh, so the question is, if I have a Google Plus local page, is there a programmatic way to update the opening hours for that page? Correct. So when we announced Google Plus Local, we said that it was part of a migration of 
the 80 million place pages into Google+. Plus. And that as part of that, we would start adding other features you were used to in place pages as time goes on. So I think that's your answer. We're going to give you a lot of the functionality you've seen in place pages. Remember, the goal is to upgrade Google. So that includes things like place pages. And that is coming, but I can't tell you when. Thank you. I think we have a question in the back. Uh, my question is about how different types of content perform on Google. Uh, a lot of focus is on events and photos. My specific question is about the video experience, sharing video content from different sites and popular shows, et cetera, et cetera, if there's any plans. Do you want to take this? Uh, I can tell you anecdotally. You should probably repeat the question for the uh, Sorry, thank you. So the, the question was about uh, how different content performs on Google Plus in terms of engagement. Um, uh, what we've seen is that multimedia content does particularly well. So uh, videos, images, uh, links with photos uh, associated with them are the ones that, that get the most engagement. So if you can make the, the visual uh, representation in the stream engaging, then it is much more likely to get higher levels of engagement uh, from, its, from the users. I will add one thing. Uh, Gerwin, who's sitting in front here, built a tool that actually shows you what times you should post to get to reach the most of members of the audience. It's really cool, and he built it on top of the API. If there are no more questions, then I think we should all go to lunch. Thank you very much. You've been wonderful. <laughs>